just to kind of get into what we were looking at, you know, when we talk about precision ag in regards to anything, uh, any crop or, or any kind of application, we're really looking for field variability. What's different in one area of that field versus another? And when it comes to planting, uh, these factors are, are key as well, but really if we focus down and, and hone in on a couple of these, what we found to be the most important when it comes to seeding one is soil type, which is an obvious answer. Uh, we looked at uh, soil productivity and really, I would narrow that down to field productivity, areas of the field that produce generally more than others. We all have uh, examples of that, uh, moisture. Moisture and the depth of the moisture was key uh, to really focus on for us because as we change soil types, that moisture may be deeper in the soil on one particular soil type than another, or you may have a heavier crust on one of your soil types that actually lifts the planter up out of the ground and you don't get as good moisture contact with your seed as you go across the field. And then the other things that, that we really focused in on were uh, really topographic or drainage uh, leveling issues and, and areas we can maybe cut back that we generally don't produce much anyway in a particular field. But I will tell you, you really need a level of support from whoever the dealer is that you're working with, whether it's John Deere, whether it's Case. Uh, for us, they were instrumental in making this project work. I will tell you that in the locations I'm going to talk about, most of them were John Deere uh, equipment that we work with. We have done it successfully with the Case IH system. We also have done it with the Modison twin row system. So it's possible. The big deal is figuring out the and tweaking the, each system and having some support from those manufacturers to help you get going is, is the main thing once you get down to the equipment. Uh, but here's the overall story. You know, we want to determine our spatial variability, and I don't know how well you can see this particular field. This is an 80-acre field uh, up in northeast Arkansas. It has a lot of sand blows in it. If you can see the red areas, those are sand blows. This is a yield math. Yield math can be real crucial or real helpful, I'll say. Can't get that mouse to work. But if you look at these red areas, those are sand blows up here, sand blows in the middle. If you have a yield map, you can tell a lot about your field and where that productivity is. You can kind of help you break it down into zones somewhat. That's not the only piece of information you need. But if you have a yield map and a soil map, uh, whether it's based off various data or zone sampling or whatever, it can give you it can give you a lot of the information you need to get started. Uh, so what we did generally is we started with the yield map, went back the next year with the various rig and all these fields, got the soil texture data, and then we also looked at aerial imagery and some of these other things, but really those two things, yield map, various data, those are key, in my opinion, if I'm going to help you uh, make some type of variable seeding rate recommendation. Uh, we've done this across the state. This has been four years uh, in the making, I guess. Uh, in several different counties in Arkansas, and we actually had one location, I think, in Mississippi last year. But here's an example field. This is on David Wildey, northeast Arkansas in the Leachville area. This is an example of a various map. A lot of us have seen these. Uh, tells us the difference in, in uh, cation exchange capacity. Basically, we relate that back to, uh, to a soil type. So in this particular situation, the red areas are the, are the sandier areas of the field. And then when you get to the green, the dark greens, those are heavy areas, heavy dirt, uh, more clay type soil. And we know that in the end, the goal is an even stand. I mean, we're planting less seed now at, on average than we ever have, okay? And we're able to do that to some extent because I think the seed quality has greatly improved over the years. I think the, the planting seed that we are actually, the quality of the planting seed we're planting now is, is much better on average than what it used to be. But the overall goal is an even stand, so whatever we need to do in these areas of the field to get that even stand, that's really what we're after. Uh, soil moisture does matter, and the depth, and the type of soil, uh, how we prepare that seed bed, you know, how do we know what population is best in a given scenario? And that's kind of what we focused on in this study. So what we did, we looked at some older data, and I can show you more of the same. We have two particular uh, key research stations in Arkansas, we do a lot of work. One's at Kaiser, it's on a clay soil type, and uh, one's at Mariana on a more silt loam type soil. And over the years, when we looked at seed rates, we always needed a higher rate to get our maximum yield on that heavy ground uh, at Kaiser. At Mariana, if we could get a stand with 35,000, 
we got our optimum yield effect. We, if we can get an even stand, that's all that matters uh, at that particular location. So we use that to kind of base some of our decisions, but what we really wanted to do was get on-farm uh, target populations and, and see how they performed across these different soil zones. So what we did, we ranged from about 25,000 seed in our, in our strips, uh, from 25,000 up to about 72,000 seed per acre. These are replicated planted strips. Uh, we got pretty close on our live plant populations in all these locations. <laughs> And here's an example in, on that wilted field of our strips there circled. We're just planting solid strips of those rates there on the left hand side all the way across. And then that's where Terry comes in. We, we do at the end of the year, we get the yield monitor data and he spatially analyzed this data to tell me what's the most profitable seeding rate at each one of these soil zones. Okay? And not the highest yield, the most profitable over what our cost was. And, and the way we looked at that is whether we had different scenarios. Maybe the seed costs, oh, <coughs> excuse me, low seed costs and high lift prices. And that's what we'd all love, right? A dollar fifty cotton and paying only a hundred dollars uh, a bag of seed. We know that's not the case, but uh, you know that's what we used for a low seed cost. Basically, was a little over a dollar per pound of lint and point zero zero two four cents per seed. Uh, when we say typical prices, that was 0 .002, almost two six cents per seed, and, and uh, that's really about 540, I think, dollars a bag, which is kind of what we're seeing now with tech and the, and the seed treatments and that kind of thing. So we looked at several different price scenarios, I guess, in these situations. And on that particular field in northeast Arkansas, the David Wildey field, I've broken this out, and again, this is gross returns over seed, not yield. This is not a yield map, this is returns uh, over the seed costs and, and our seed rates along the bottom here. So the first three at the top is basically a zone where the EC was one to seven. That's our sandiest areas of the field. So if we look at this red line here under typical prices, that line shifts more to the left side of 40,000 seed per acre, somewhere around 38. When we look at uh, uh, silt loam, type soil, which would be 7 to 25. Again, uh, on, uh, let's see, the blue lines typical prices were about, about 42, 43 to 44,000, somewhere in there. That's about where our recommendation is in the state in general. But when we see high costs and low lift prices, which is this orange bar, on the silt on soil, we see it shift to the left here. The only case we don't see that is any of our heavy ground down here below the 25, EC 25 or higher. In all of those cases, more seed was better on that heavy ground, just like we've seen in Kaiser or whatever. So, you know, we're seeing similar results to uh, what we've seen in the past. We really need more seed on our heavy ground soil types, our clay soil types. And then at, what do we do now? Well, we took it even further because we know these variable rate planters, we can not just vary the rate, we can turn them on and off. <laughs> and with some of the, the road guidance things, uh, you know, we can turn them on and off uh, three rows at a time, four rows at a time, depending on how the planter's set up. So this is that wildy field again. This is a yield map. And just to show you, this drainage area goes right down the middle uh, of the field here. We can turn it off there. We can turn it off on these rows that uh, get driven over a hundred times going to check the center of the pivot uh, back and forth. We can turn it off. You know, on the turn rows, and just turning the planter off on these turn rows, ditches, drainage areas will save you a lot more seed than you realize, just being able to do that. And then the pivot edges, or the, the dry land corners of the pivot, you know, what, uh, what will that produce? Well, I can tell you, on this type of soil, if we get a rain every week, yeah, you want plants out there because you're going you're gonna to make a decent yield. But if you don't get a rain every week on this heavy sand, you're not going to make nothing much at all. So we looked at backing up our rates in the dry land corners. And so this past year what we did is we actually planted this whole 350 acres based on two different scenarios. One is in that sandy soil we only planted a seed and a half per foot. And this is above that black line there. Below the black line on the 150 acres below that we just simply planted two on the sand 
three on the silt loam types and four on that our heavier grain. So we increased as the as the soil went up or as the soil got uh, heavier towards the clay. And, and this is kind of what we saw at 350 acres. On average, he planted about 48,000 every year. Well, we increased his rate a little bit on the heavy ground, but we decreased it a pretty good bit on the sand. We ended up saving him about uh, 8,000 seed per acre. Well, just across those 350 acres, we averaged $20 an acre in savings. Okay? Uh, he told us we could do that on his whole farm would be about $160,000 in savings. And, and not th this field will not represent anybody's whole farm. So there's going to be some fields where you're not going to see that. But the point is we're putting seed. We're paying so much for the seed now. We need to put seed where we, we, we get the most profit out of it. Uh, at least it's kind of what we're seeing. In another location in southeast Arkansas, this is on a, a silt loam type, a little lighter than a silt loam actually. And uh, in 2010, we got a significant yield increase just on seeding rate. Right there about that 45,000 where we usually see our best seeding rate on those type soils. But when we look at profitability above seeding costs, the lowest rate over those years was the best. We didn't have as much variability in this field, only up to an seed of about 10. And in each scenario, we, uh, we saw about 35,000 being our best seeding rate population across that whole field. So, uh, and, and then one more, this is again in Mississippi County on another uh, field that has a lot of sand blows in it. We saved him about 4,000 seed per acre. So uh, we've done it at several different locations. It's not just about seed savings. Obviously, we want to maintain our yield. Uh, we, I haven't seen a case where we've actually increased yield. What we're doing is we're saving a little seed cost and we're maintaining the profitability or the, the yield of that particular. Uh, just a, some pros and cons. To get set up initially, you really need another person doing this. I've not worked with any growers that can just go in their office and, uh, and myself either, just go in there and say, okay, we're going to set up your whole farm to do this. It takes a lot of time to set it up. Uh, you got to go field by field and you have to have the data necessary in order to do it. But the beauty of this technology is once you get it set up the first time, it's there until you decide to change it. You have it's just like an A and B, a card with your A and B lines, or a card that you mark all your drainage ditches or levees or whatever with uh, RTK. If you have it on that card, unless you lose the card, it's there, and so you can use it from one year to the next. Um, these systems don't talk, so if you try to hook, we tried this. We hooked a case planter to a John Deere tractor and tried to make it work, and it's difficult to do that. You've got to rewire the whole cab and everything else in it, and, and then sometimes it still won't work. So, you know, it, it seems to be more or less a proprietary only deal, uh, but uh, there's a number of software packages that you really have to have if you start mixing and matching equipment. And sometimes the lack of support can be, I mean, quite honestly, frustrating uh, to try to get set up to do this. But if you have good people to work with, I mean, it's, it is obviously, uh, something to try if it's possible. This doesn't you know, take into account any of the natural disasters that can still happen, so we still don't need to cut our seeding rate too much. Uh, we've had to replant several of these fields where we, where we have tried the variable rate seeding, but it wasn't because we planted too less seed. We were gonna to have to replant those fields anyway. Will it work? Just to sum it up, absolutely it will work. Uh, I think it just takes a lot of time to set it up and set it up right. The biggest, the biggest thing that I can tell you that where you can save is in your low productive areas and just turning it off on the, on the ditch rows, turn banks, drainage areas, uh, places that you know you never will produce anything, but we plant seed there anyway for some reason. Um, on the sand, I think in general we can cut back on our average population. And I think we need to be somewhere between 35 and 40,000 on the sand. Uh, on the silt loam, I think we need to be between 45 and 48. And really on that heavier ground, we need to be between uh, 52 to 58,000. And that's, you know, that, that costs a lot of money to plant that on that heavy ground. But time and time again, our, our higher seeding rate in that 50,000 range has been better on, on our heavy ground. 